Hey everybody, I'm Sam Gross with electricbikereport.com and this is the Rad Rover 6 Plus Step Through. This is the step through frame, more accessible version of Rad's flagship electric fat bike. This is also the brand new model that came out just a few months ago. It's got a whole new look, a redesigned motor, a semi-integrated redesigned battery, and a whole host of other new things that we really, really like about this bike. We're going to put it through its paces today in a series of real world tests to see how it performs, so stay tuned. So Rad has done more to this bike than just manipulate how the frame looks. They've actually spent a lot of time redesigning how the bike rides and feels. They've slackened out the front end a little bit and adopted some geometry that we more traditionally see on typical mountain bikes. So this bike performs a little bit more balanced. It corners very nicely. It seems to ride very nicely over uneven terrain. I always stop just short of calling a electric fat bike a good riding mountain bike, mostly because of how much they weigh and how big those tires are. It just makes the bike a little bit more unwieldy in tighter technical terrain. But if you're on a dirt road, if you're on a dirt path, if you're looking to explore some kind of maybe mellower mountain bike trails, this bike is going to do a very nice job. Rad has also spent a ton of time redesigning the rider experience in the cockpit. You don't have just one display with this bike, you now actually have two. There's a center mounted display that shows you all your traditional riding metrics, your speed, your distance travel, time elapsed, things like that. And then on the left hand side of the handlebars, you have a display combined with a control switch. Those switches are going to allow you to change your pedal assist level, turn the bike on and off, and even operate the headlight. And then that small display is going to give you your battery readout and it's going to tell you what pedal assist level you're in. So here brings me to one of my, a few of my only complaints about this bike, and these are some of the more nitpicky things. The first being with the display. That left hand one is difficult to read. I'm going to start sounding like a broken record here with all of the rads that I have reviewed that have the same display, but it is just a minor gripe. You have to shield it from the sun to be able to really get an idea of what pedal assist level you're in and what battery, how much battery life you have left. In addition to that, there is just a little bit of a rat's nest of cables up here. It's not very good cable management, and I would really love to see Rad clean this up. It is just a lot of zip ties, there's a lot of cables, there's just a lot going on up here. And it's not going to affect the performance of the bike per se, but it just doesn't look very good. And it kind of detracts from the overall facelift this thing got. And then that brings me to my very final thing, and this is... As I've said before when I've reviewed their step-through bikes, it's a little bit more of a, a challenge towards Rad. So this is a step-through bike. It's going to be geared towards people who either have mobility issues, balance issues, or they just really don't want to lift their leg over a high top tube to get on and off their bike. It's a more accessible way to get into bicycling. The only problem with this frame is it's geared towards shorter people. Now I am six foot one. This bike does not fit me even with the seat post entirely maxed out. I would love it to see Rad come out with another version of this bike with a slightly larger frame that's going to work better for people my size and up because I would very much wager that you have a lot of people who are on the taller end of the spectrum who still want to have a bike that's more accessible and easier to get on and off of. But other than that, I've been so pleased with how this bike rides. I really like the double displays now. It's, it's a good bike. So to get an idea of how well the 672 watt hour battery performs in the real world, we put it through a series of range tests. The first of these tests we did on PIS-5, so the bike's highest pedal assist level. And on that test, it went 26.7 miles before it finally died. We also did the test on PIS-2, so the bike's second lowest pedal assist level. And on that test, it did 50.99 miles before it finally died. So there's a few th interesting things, aside from the fact that that is a fairly good range result for a bike with a 750 watt motor and then a 672 watt hour battery. So 50.99 miles and 26.7 miles are some great results. But we have actually tested this bike before. We previously, a few months ago, tested the Rad Rover 6 Plus High Step. So it's got the exact same battery, the exact same motor, but on that one, on the low pedal assist range test, so PAS1, this bike went the exact same distance. 
So there's something very interesting happening there. So the average speed was much lower on the other bike where we did a PIS-1 test, but it still went just a few tenths of a mile actually shorter than the bike on PIS-2. So the lesson to be learned here, if you're going for a long distance bike ride, if you've got a lot of ground to cover, my suggestion would be to ride in PIS-2 because we did see a substantial increase in average speed over that. The other thing that is interesting to learn about these numbers is that compared to the Rad Rover 5, so the previous generation of this bike, we're not seeing a whole lot of improvement in range on the Rad Rover 6 Plus over the Rad Rover 5. We're actually seeing about one to two to three mile difference in total ranges. So it's still a really great result, but I'm not sure we, we're seeing that increase in range that Rad said we might with this new battery setup. But all in all, it's a really nice result from this bike. Over 50 miles and over 25 miles, you really can't go wrong with that. Range is not going to be a problem when riding this bike. So to get an idea of how quickly the Rad Rover 6 Plus step through goes uphill, we've brought it out to our local test hill, Hellhole. So this hill is a third of a mile long. It's a 12% gradient on average with several, several pitches that are much steeper than that. So it is long enough and it is steep enough that it is going to stress this motor and see how well it's going to perform. So we're going to do two separate tests, one on maximum PAS and one with just the throttle, so the motor alone with no help from my legs. Rad says the 750 watt rear hub motor has been retooled to climb 40% faster. We're going to put that to the test. We have the results of another Rad Rover 6 Plus we're going to compare it to. And we're also going to look back on the results of the Rad Rover 5 as well and see how this bike stacks up. So let's get on with it. So this is the throttle only section of the Rad Power Bikes Rad Rover 6 Plus Step Throughs Hill Climb Test. We go through the bottom of the wash, hit that 20 mile an hour max motor assisted speed, and then start chugging our way up the first, actually the longest and one of the steepest sections of Hellhole. It's definitely losing speed fast, which is pretty typical. And about 8 miles an hour. And it's just plugging away. Not doing too bad right here. This last 20 yards of the steep pitch is where we see a lot of bikes lose a lot of speed. And that seems like six mile an hour it might be fairly slow. It's actually pretty good right there. Usually we see bikes dropping down to like fives and fours. Regaining speed on one of the more mellow sections of the hill super important because this final steep section is actually kind of the the rear hub motor killer because you've got no speed going into it and it pitches up right here and the speed just crashes but this thing's doing okay down to five just cruising along and once we're through there we're basically home free The rover's doing awesome, very, actually virtually no strain from the motor. It's extremely quiet. No odd vibrations. Nothing that's indicating this thing's struggling. It's almost at the top. So this is the PAS5 portion of the Rover 6 Plus step throughs hill climb test. Hit 20 to the bottom of the wash. Losing speed at a much slower rate on this first steep section. Cycling through that mixed Shimano seven speed drivetrain. It's 
still able to keep a pretty moderate pedaling pace. Definitely giving it a little oomph, but not so much that I can't talk my way up this. Cruising through the final steep section. Just like on the throttle portion of the test. No indication of struggle from the motor. This thing is cruising. Awesome job from the rover. So the Rad Rover 6 Plus step through did really well on our test hill hell hole. On the throttle only portion of the test, it got to the top in 2 minutes and 8 seconds with an average speed of 8.5 miles an hour. And then on the PIS 5 portion of the test, it made it to the top in 1 minute 24 seconds with an average speed of 12.9 miles an hour. So those are both really solid results from the 750 watt rear hub motor bike. But there are some notes I'm going to make about this because we do have some things, some previous results to compare to. The first note I'm going to make is on the max PAS portion that we recorded today, that 1 minute and 24 second with a 12.9 mile an hour average. That is the exact same speed and the exact same time we recorded when we tested the high step version of the Rad Rover 6 Plus. So good on Rad for making a consistent motor. The second note I'm going to make is the results between this bike and the previous iteration, the Rad Rover 5. So in both of our tests, the throttle only test and the PAS 5 test, we actually recorded slower times on the Rad Rover 6 Plus. It's not by a huge margin on the throttle only test, we're talking a margin of two seconds. And then on the max PAS test, we're talking about a handful of seconds, maybe 10 or 15. This is not something I'm really going to hold against the Rad Rover 6 Plus because there's some very important context here. The first is two different riders conducted these two different bike reviews. I'm personally doing the Rad Rover 6 Plus that recorded the slower times, and my former colleague Pierce Kettering did the old Rad Rover 5. Pierce is substantially lighter than I am, and I do also know that he tends to pedal uphill harder than I do, which could account for those couple of seconds of change in the PAS 5 test. The weight alone could account for that two second difference between the throttle tests. So there's also some other context I want to add to this bike's performance, mostly being how well it handled the stress we put, on, put it under. It's not exactly a speed racer, it's not going to get to the top in a lightning fast time, but never once did it act like it was going to fail on the steeper sections of the hill, which is very impressive considering how steep this hill is. And never once do we hear any odd rattling, odd grinding. We, sometimes we even get like a, an odd electrical smell on some of the steeper sections of this hill. Never once did this bike do that. It just kind of plugged its way up. It never once seemed like it was over-torquing the motor or doing anything bad that would damage the bike. It feels like you could just kind of go up and down this steep hill all day and it would just do it the same speed every single time, which is really impressive after my experience of taking a lot of different bikes up this hill. So all in, I do have to say the Rad Rover 6 Plus Step Through has done a very nice job up our hill. Does it quite meet that 40% increase that Rad says we should see from this motor? I'm not sure our, our results are conclusive here today, but I will say it did climb very well. So the 750 watt rear hub motor on the Rad Rover 6 Plus is, in my opinion, one of the better that we've tested. It feels very refined and very controlled. You're not going to see the fastest top speed out of it because it is limited to a class 2 20 mile an hour max motor assisted speed. But in that range, you get some of the best torque, some of the gruntiest feeling, and really one of the most more controlled and I would say flexible power bands of any fat tire 750 watt e-bike I've tested. It's a very impressively done motor. So this is a class 2 e-bike. It has a throttle and it has pedal assist and all of that is limited up to 20 miles per hour. There's five pedal assist settings and to get a sampling of how the bike performs in each of those five pedal assist settings, we put this bike to the test on our circuit. And what we're looking for in the circuit is we're looking for a very nice and predictable delineation of speed between each 
pedal assist level and this bike has that. It also gives us an opportunity to get an idea of what the top average speed is and this bike put down a 19 mile an hour average hot lap around our circuit which is very very close to that 20 mile an hour max motor assisted speed so we've been really pleased with this motor. It has performed very well in our test. So one of the biggest upgrades of the Rad Rover 6 Plus over the previous edition of the Rad Rover are going to be its nut hydraulic disc brakes. Now the Rad Rover 5 came with a set of mechanical disc brakes which worked fine, but the hydraulic disc brakes should be an increase in stopping performance over the previous version of the bike. We're going to put it to the test today in a brake test to see if that is correct. How this test works is we bring the bike up to 20 miles an hour, we slam on the brakes as hard as we can five times, then we take the average of those five stopping distances for the result. So let's put this bike to the test and see how the brakes perform. So as we had guessed, these nut hydraulic disc brakes did outperform their mechanical counterparts. And in fact, these actually came to a stop in a very quick distance. That is 12 feet and 7 inches on average, which is a great result from an affordable bike. So these nut hydraulic disc brakes are definitely an improvement over the previous version of the bike. As I've mentioned before, this is not the first of Rad's new redesigned e-bikes we've reviewed in the past several months. And each time I get on one of these, there's new things I find that I like about it. But grown up is really the word that comes to mind when I look at Rad's new bikes, and especially the new Rad Rover 6 Plus. Rad in the past year or so seems to have just reached a level of maturity with their bikes that's very becoming of a company that has quickly become one of the leaders in the affordable direct-to-consumer e-bike space. It's a really nice bike. It feels very refined. feels very, very well done. There are some things I'd love to see them change about it, or at least I'd challenge them to change about it. We mentioned the cable management, we mentioned the frame and that display, but those are all very minor gripes when it comes to a bike that all in all I'd say has very much lived up to the hype. It is a fantastically riding electric fat bike. It's got a 750 watt rear hub motor. It's performed very well in all of our tests as most of Rad's bikes usually do. So if you've enjoyed our review of the Rad Rover 6 Plus Step Through, be sure to like this video and be sure to subscribe to our channel for more updates from Rad and the other companies we cover. If you also want to learn more about this bike, be sure to click on the description, or excuse me, the link in the description below this video for a little bit more of an in-depth review of the bike with all of the data that we've collected. For Electric Bike Report, I'm Sam Gross. Thank you so much for watching.